Good evening and welcome to another video by Rush UK. Right, on today's video we're going to be talking about our 10 failures of Uber during this pandemic uh, period we're having currently right now. So we'll start away. Um, we'll start straight away, I mean. Right, firstly, number 10. Now, inability for additional income. Now, we, we've all been looking for some sort of extra income we could do currently while we're staying at home really now what i mean by that is you know we want to take a much safer approach so uber has different platforms for example uber eats and okay i do realize that they are not that busy right now but they will be you know give it a week's time now mcdonald's are starting to open with takeaways so they'll be very busy coming up um, in a week's time or two but this isn't my point my point is that there was no concession on behalf of Uber to help your drivers move on to them sort of platforms. You know, they have given no thoughts for these drivers. Now, you all, you probably also know that, you know, a lot of supermarkets have been looking for delivery staff. And, you know, Uber has no way gone into any constructive talks with these kind of uh, companies. You know, they do realize that they have a pool of drivers who just are looking for, you know, less riskier alternatives to, you know, dr to the driving you know, riders around. So, you know, there's been a real failure, you know, for them to really look out for any additional income for its drivers. Number nine. Right. Now, we've we've heard there has been a few Uber, Uber taxi drivers, you know, losing their lives you know, through this uh, virus. And... You know, I really think, you know, someone you know, like the company of Uber should be making some sort of lump payment, you know, to his, uh, for the drivers who have lost their lives. You know, just like um, the government is doing for the NHS staff, you know, it's their own people. You know, they're giving, uh, I don't know, was it 65 or 75,000 pounds each to the people who have lost their lives. And I think something like this should be done uh, on Uber's side as well. And if Uber didn't want to do that, really, what what I think they should have done is, you know, constructed some sort of a, a payment from us. And what I mean by that is, you know, first once we were all back to work, you know, they they would have said, look, you know, the first job you're going to do, we're going to take a pound and we're going to put into this fund, and we're going to pay uh, a lump sum for the drivers who have lost their lives um, with this pandemic, and um, and. You know, if they just did that, and I think, you know, the amount of taxi drivers out there who drive for Uber, you know, a pound each will, you know, that will be a considerable amount, really. And then they could just distribute that um, to the actual families, you know, and I really don't think any of us would mind that, you know, giving a pound or two away, uh, whatever the amount they want to do. You know, I think something like that would be really nice for them to do. Okay, number eight, well, we got communication between drivers. Now, Uber has funny ways of communicating uh, with his drivers. Sometimes it's through emails, and then, you know, you might see the odd post podcast coming along. But whatever it is, you know, it's not enough. Communicating to drivers, um, I think, during this time is very paramount. Now, as all drivers are really, you know, they're really in the dark here and poor communication from Uber to inform his drivers, you know, where they are, st where they stand and what the company is doing about what's happening down there. I think, you know, a lot more communications needs to be done uh, through whatever means they want to do through emails or podcast, whatever it is. There needs to be, a, you know, they need to double their uh, act there. Number seven, financial support. Now, there hasn't been real financial support uh, given to his drivers. Apart from the measly £200 I think they were giving. But what I'm trying to say is, right, they need to come up with some sort of a loan structure for drivers who are really facing financial hardship. And that would be really appreciated by them. So, you know, we're not asking for um, money, to, you know, for them to give us really but you know if they could uh, arrange some loans or whatever uh through you know i don't know they got they got they got real financial backups there you know and to give it to his drivers who have been working for them for a while and everything so they're now they're on the platform and 
um, and all sorts. You know, they're well paid back, but some sort of a loan to the drivers who are really facing hardship, you know, that would be really, really appreciated, I think. Uh, number six, no commission deduction. Now, you've seen Uber giving discounts to his riders, you know, i.e. the NHS staff. But reducing commission rate for his drivers who are you know, really risking their lives, now that would be really nice of them. But nothing of them sort of things has been implemented at all. So quite a big letdown there really on the commission structure side of things. Distributing of PPE. Now, this has totally gone the wrong way for them. You know, they started this really late. Um, they started giving uh, PPEs now. Um, and, and and it's really inadequate quantity of um, uh, products they're giving. Um, what they really should have done really was given all the drivers, I don't know, a £50 Amazon voucher. They could really exchange for, you know, they, they, they exchange that for their PPEs only. And, um, and, you know, they could get them through Amazon a lot more quicker. Um, and as I said, they started this really late, you know, they should have done this about seven, eight weeks ago. Instead of all this now, what they're doing is, um, it's like a comical uh, order, ordering online and waiting for it to come come to you and all that sort of thing. You know, the, the PPE side of things from Uber is uh, quite, quite disappointing. Uh, number four, reactivation of drivers. Now, some drivers has been, you know, exp um, experiencing this, and that is to get them uh, their account reactivated after they've been off for fourteen days. I think you know, as soon as they get some sort of a sy symptoms of that virus. Now, some drivers, um, what they're experiencing is they're not being able to log on, and after a while, well, when they are logged on, you know, they find themselves only to be logged off again there's something not right at uber's end and you know this is quite you know they, the whole thing is in shambles there number three right we got the axa insurance now if you are claiming uh, sickness pay through axa the chances are you'd have been refused and uber themselves haven't intervened at all you know to make this a lot more easier for its drivers um, you know, again, the big letdown by Uber. You know, they should have realised they're working with a company called AXA. The drivers ain't getting what they want. You know, some sort of, or some people, some staff being dedicated to that specific uh, task. They should have allocated that specific task to someone, but they haven't. And a lot of the drivers uh, will, will be receiving emails saying, blah, 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 and this is the reason you've been refused. And obviously, we know all the reasons because they want certain things, and and you can't provide that certain uh, documentation and everything because you now the doctor's not um, open, the um, hospitals don't provide you with them sort of records. So again, a big letdown on Uber side on that sort of thing. Number two, closure of the green light hub. <laughs> now this is the only thing they reacted really quickly. Uh, closing the uh, hub down now that has left a significant amount of uh, drivers with a lot of problems now what this actually illustrates is that these hubs are specifically designated for the recruitment of new drivers so once that has been halted there was really no need for this to be opened you know this has nothing to do with solving existing drivers problems it's all dedicated. That green hub is all dedicated to recruitment. That's all it is. And number one, the biggest one, I think, really, is there were warning drivers not to wear masks at the beginning. Now, the reason they were obviously giving at that time was mainly it was a safety issue. Riders wouldn't be able to recognise the driver's face, you know, if they're having the right um, driver there. Now, that has actually left drivers, you know, not with them not wearing masks in a real dangerous, highly state of, you know, catching the virus. What Uber should be really doing is not clamping down on the drivers who are not wearing masks 
And well, they should be giving a clear, firstly, for drivers to wear masks. And secondly, I think more important than anything else, they should be saying to the riders, look, you cannot get in one of our cabs without wearing a mask. And you know something that will make the drivers feel far, far more comfortable letting riders in. So there you go. Uh, these are the quick 10 failures Uber has been struggling with during this pandemic period. And I'll catch you guys some other time. Bye bye now.